All right, let's get a quick dive deeper into the action with our markets reporters. Abigail, why don't you get us started? Well, Romain, you've been pointing out all afternoon the discrepancy between small cap and large cap, that Russell 2000 really underperforming on the day, down another day. And that's the story on the year, too, not being down but underperforming the S&P 500. What we're looking at here in blue is the S&P 500. In white, the Russell 2000. Uh, it does appear, actually, that last year we, have, of course, had that volatility. And then here's this year, uh, the rally. And we see the big divergence between small cap and the S&P 500. Right now, the S&P 500 up about 17% on the year, small cap up about 13%. But what I'd like to point out as well, we do now have the Russell 2000 below its 200-day moving average. It's interesting, Mike, because this is often seen as a haven for trade. So is this some sort of tell that there will be a kind of trade deal? It's hard to know what the case is here. But price is definitely telling us that investors on this day and a couple days here uh, are shunning small cap. What does that mean around the S&P 500? How will these two indexes diverge? Something we'll be reporting on again in the future, Mike. Well, thanks, Abigail. Well, obviously, for all the talk about the trade war and even potential currency wars this year, it's actually been a very quiet, boring year for some of the main currency pairs out there. In fact, if you look at the dollar index, which is a gauge of the dollar versus some of its main trading partners, it's actually trading in a, a, from high to low this year a range of less than 3.5 percent, which would put it on pace to be the quietest year since the index was was created in 1973, should this range hold? That's obviously only halfway through the year. And as you can see in this chart, today it's starting to get interesting, finally. For one thing, the dollar is breaking below that 200-day moving average, that long-term trend line. And also today, it's going negative ever so slightly for the year. So, Emma, obviously, if this dollar weakness continues, it's going to be music to the ears of people who are bullish things like commodities, U.S. stocks, and emerging market stocks, uh, Emma. Also helping the gold rally, Mike, that's what I've been looking at, the yellow metal really upping the price when you talk about something being worth its weight in gold. The standard measurement of gold, the ounce, closing above $1,400 today for the first time since 2013. Investors flocking to the precious metal, both as a haven and as we see bond yields sink around the world. And ETF investors getting in on the action. Take a look at this G-chart. You can see that the Spider Gold ETF, the Gold Shares ETF, saw its biggest inflow on record on Friday that was some 1.6 billion dollars that upped the assets of the ETF by some 5% to about 36 billion dollars. Hedge funders also increasing their net long positions to the highest in more than a year. As one analyst said, the gold bulls are back in control.